sing it together unto Him. Unto Him shall singing of the people be. We are singing together unto Him. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. A very good morning to one and all and a warm welcome to today's Eucharistic celebration. Let us keep all our intentions at the feet of the Lord and sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, the central theme of today's readings is that we need to sh show courage for our Christian convictions in our day-to-day -day lives. When we are faced with hatred and rejection, we need to stand up for the truth. And that is what we see in today's first reading and the gospel. We see the prophet Jeremiah, and we also see Jesus in the gospel who stood up for Christian convictions for the truth when they wanted to do something in life. And therefore, these two become emissaries of the word of God. Today, we could ask ourselves certain questions. When God calls me, am I ready to stand to speak for the truth? Do I give excuses that I cannot do it? Or oh, am I bold enough to say, yes, Lord, with your power in my hands, I am ready to stand up for the truth. And therefore, for the many times that we have failed in our life to really stand up for the truth, let us ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Take away 
our every sin have mercy on us glory 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 to God in the highest glory 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 to God in the highest you alone are the holy one you alone are the Lord in the spirit in the glory of God the Father Amen glory 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 to God in the highest glory 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 to God in the highest let us pray grant us Lord our God that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. But you, you dress yourself for work, arise, and say to them everything that I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you by them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the king of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Let your response be, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Repeat. My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, incline your ear to me, and save me. Response. My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Be my rock, my constant refuge a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. My God, free me from the hand of the wicked. Response. My, my mouth, mouth will, will tell, tell of, of your, your salvation, salvation, Lord. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust. O Lord, from your, my youth, on you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. Response, my, my mouth will tell of, of your, your salvation, salvation, Lord. My mouth will tell of your justice and all the day long of your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from youth and I proclaim your wonders still. Response, my, my mouth, mouth will tell of your salvation, salvation, Lord. Faith, hope and love abide, but the greatest of these is love. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am a noisy gone or a clinging chamber. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysterious and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. 
it does not insist on its way own way it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice at wrong doing but rejoices with the truth love bears all things believes all things hopes all things and dwells all things love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when the perfect comes the partial will pass away when i was a child i spoke like a child i thought like a child i reasoned like a child when i become a man i gave up childish ways for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now i know in part then i shall know fully even as i have been fully known so now faith hope and love abide this tree but the greatest of these is love the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god, god. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory be to you o lord at that time jesus began to say in the synagogue today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth and they said is not this joseph's son and he said to them doubtless you will quote to me this proverb physician heal yourself what we have heard you did at capernaum do here in your hometown as well and he said truly i say to you no prophet is acceptable in his hometown But in truth I tell you there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elisha when the heavens were shut up 3 weeks and 6 months and a great famine came over the land and Elisha was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian When they heard these things all in the synagogue were filled with wrath and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill of which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff but passing through the amids he went away the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus, jesus christ. christ my dear sisters and brothers in christ jesus today's readings call us to focus on the theme of love once there was a physician who said that i have healed so many patients I have cured many of them and I have been giving medicine to almost people for 30 years now. But he says among all the medicines that I have prescribed to them one of the best medicine that has helped in healing is love. And so someone inquired what if this medicine doesn't work? 
He said, give a double dose of it. Yes, my dear sisters and brothers, today's readings basically show how we need to double the dose of love in our life. St. Paul very clearly tells us that of the three, faith, hope, and love, the greatest is love. And it is true love that we can heal many people. We are in a time wherein the whole world is faced with a crisis. Many people are dejected, many people are down. But in this time, we are called to be symbols and instruments of love. The more love that we spread to people, the more their life will be brightened like a candle. In times of this darkness, they need something like a candle to light their life. And therefore, we see this love word splashed everywhere. It is splashed on the internet, it is splashed on Facebook, Instagram, on TV serials, on movies. And many a times, love has taken another connotation. We think that love is just like preparing biryani or baking cakes. And therefore, many a times, this word love has been misunderstood by many. And so it has taken another turn which throws us off guard when we think of the word love. But today's second reading from St. Paul shows us that love has a different meaning. Love basically is love standing for the truth. And who is greater to show us the way to this truth? None other than the anointed one, Christ himself. He walked the path of truth. He faced dejection, rejection, yet he stood up for what is truth. And therefore, looking at this master of the universe, we are called to imitate him who is the light of truth, the light of love. He showed us never to give up in our life when we follow the truth. When we follow the truth, it will be something that will put us off guard against all the other many people that we love because they do not want to stand for the truth. But when we stand for the truth, we are standing with Christ our Savior who wants us and has baptized us to stand for this truth. And therefore it will mean you need to give up your old opinions, your thoughts in order to follow this aspect of love. But many a times we are like Jeremiah. How can I stand up for the truth? I am only a child. But here is where Jesus comes in and says, yes, you might be only a child, but I am giving you that grace. I am filling you with that faith. I am filling you with that hope to go out in love and stand for the truth. And therefore, God calls each one of us to speak the truth in love. God empowers us to go out into the community in love and bring truth to them. We are in a time wherein soon we will be entering into the elections. And therefore, my dear sisters and brothers, we are called to think, to use our discerning power to make the right choice in life to stand up for the truth in order that we may see our future generations really benefit from the leaders that we elect. Do not go by face value. Many a times face value may take us in another direction. But when we look at the person who is really calibered in order to help our future generations see a bright future, that's when we are standing up for the truth. It means moving against the tide of what is going on in our context. And therefore, like the psalmist, today we are called to proclaim, my mouth shall declare your justice and day by day your salvation. And so from all these readings, we could put our focus on three aspects. The first thing, 
Let us face rejection with prophetic courage and optimism. Today's story of Jesus' rejection in his own hometown is many a times our story in life. How many a times we have faced our family members, our friends, our relatives sometimes reject us. Why? Because we might have stood up for the truth. They might have failed to understand us that we are come to enlighten their lives, to give them a certain encouragement in life. Jesus came to bring truth in his hometown. He came to bring encouragement to them to lead a new life, but he was rejected. And many a times it has happened to us. But let's not look at those who reject us. Let us more look at ourselves. How many a times have we rejected others in our life? Wherever we might be going, on the streets, wherever we might be working, wherever we might be in our own house, how many a times we have rejected people? Let us learn to value people because they come to bring about enlightenment grace and love in our lives. Second, let us not, like the people in Jesus' hometown, reject God in our life. Many a times we see the story of Jesus' hometown is many a times our story. We reject God in our lives, especially when things don't go our way. Many a times we see that when this pandemic arose, people started questioning, where is God in all this? But if today you and me are still alive, it is because God loves each one of us. And therefore, if this God is a God of love, is a God of truth, we are called not to reject this God. We are called to love this God more and more. But many a times because of our pride, our lack of trust in this God, we have failed. We have begun to reject him. Let us turn back to God who is a loving God. And the third thing, we must have prophetic courage for our convictions. Through our baptism, we are all inspired. We are all sent as prophets in this world to spread God's message. And therefore, if we every day in the Eucharist take the word of God back, and spread a good word to wherever we meet, whoever we meet, then we are really standing up for the courageous witness that Christ gave on this world. And therefore today, if we can reflect over these three things, let our message be the word love. L-O-V-E. L stands for loyalty. Let us be loyal to our God. A God who stood up by himself. He does not tell us things, but he is not doing it. He has shown, he has walked that way and shown us how to be loyal to God. And therefore, this loyalty we are called to show to God, not only to God, but to everyone that we meet. Let's be loyal people in our life. O stands for optimism. Let us be optimistic in whatever is happening in our world, knowing and trusting God that God is working in our world. Let us be optimistic to stand for the truth, to stand for those things which do not fit into the ideology of the world. That's when we are being loyal, we are being optimistic. V stands for visionary. Let us have a vision for life. Unless we have a vision for our life, what we want to do with our life, we are not really leading a life that is more fulfilling to God. It is when we have a vision, a dream, just as Christ had a vision for what he came into this world for, that is why he accomplished his mission. When we have a vision in life, that is when we will learn to accomplish our mission in life. And E stands for enduring. Let us endure the things that are happening in this world and yet realize that God will one day free us from whatever is happening. 
Enduring is a part and parcel of our life. When we give up, we are not standing by Christ's side. And therefore, if we can take this word love, we will be able to have a fruitful time in our life. And therefore, on this fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us keep this word love and let us spread this love to all we meet. Amen. Now let us all rise and profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From, From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life lasting. Amen. The liturgy of the word today reminds us of our prophetic mission in this world. As followers of Christ, we are called to be his prophets, messengers of the kingdom. It is no easy job to speak on behalf of God, not merely with our words, but with our lives. We run the risk of being rejected and even persecuted. Let us pray to the Lord for courage and grace to carry out our prophetic mission. Let your response be, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, the Pope, the bishops, and all the leaders of the Church, that they may focus more and more on their prophetic role in the Church rather than on matters of administration, we pray, Lord, Lord mercifully hear our prayer. prayer. We do not belong to Israel by birth, but in your mercy, you, ma you made of us, outsiders, your new Israel. Grant us, Lord, that we may always render you true worship and praise in your house of prayer. We pray, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world may humbly and obediently listen to the voices of the people whom they are called to serve. We pray, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. The people who are oppressed and discriminated on grounds of color, race, or nationality may be assisted in their struggle to obtain equality of rights. We pray, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. For those chosen by God to serve as prophets, that they may be true to their message and their God-assigned mission. We pray, Lord, mercifully hear our prayer. Let us pause for a few moments and place our own intentions before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all our petitions, counting on your infinite goodness and mercy. Grant us always the grace to be true to our Christian commitment in everyday circumstances of our lives. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Take 
sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live, move and have our being. While in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Ignatius, Saint Francis Xavier, who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so with courage we say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who calls us to live our life in love. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but you only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us, who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. is 
desire and I long to worship you. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, True faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with you your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to be messengers of the gospel of love. Thanks be to Lord. God. Oh,